Hello, I'm Adam Haling from Parts Fun Known. It's all coming to an end. This is part one of our season finale of the uh, No Rolls Barred One Shots, our QCU. It's all coming to an end. We didn't intend for it all to kind of interlock together, but we're obsessed with comics and making stuff matter. So here we are, season finale. Uh, as ever, if you're interested in the system, check out Worldwide Wrestling, designed by Nathan D. Power. Left a link in the description below. But for now, we're going to drop you right into it. It's all coming to an end. There's a crisis between worlds. Hello and welcome to CBW, where the big boys are back with a vengeance. I'm Tom, head of time and space here at CBW, and these are our players. Hi, my name's Lolo. Hello, my name is Luke. Hello, my name is Adam. Hi, my name's Laurie. Hi, my name's Ollie, but you might know me better as the High Flyer. Rick Thunder. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's do a fight. It's slightly wonky glass. <sighs> the time, the 1990s. The place, an aircraft hangar at Naval Air Station Miramax in California. <laughs> the country is in the grip of a fear perpetrated by the mysterious and evil mastermind, Red Scare. Only two men have shown the courage and skill needed to combat this menace. Ace fighter pilot Rick Thunder and his loyal wingman Tim Quick. Today, after weeks of ominous silence, Red Scare has struck again and the trail of destruction leads all the way to the Bermuda Triangle. With no time to lose, Rick Thunder prepares his danger zone jet for what might just be the most important flight of his life life. I love you, Danger Zone, you reliable, completely inanimate jet. Oh, we're going to have some good adventures together, and let's stick it to those reds. You feel a, a warm pat on your back from the, uh, the boyishly good-looking, blonde-haired wingman, Tim Quick. You tell him, Rick. Sometimes I think you and that jet are better friends than you and me. Never. You're definitely my best friend. This is just an inanimate jet right now. <laughs> You are a, a person of flesh and bone that will never betray me. You're so loyal, Tim Quick. Rick, I promise I will be with you till your dying day. That is, that's such a nice thing to say. With no <laughs> ulterior motives. What can I say? <laughs> I'm a nice guy. And with that, you hear the clack, clack, clack of heeled feet as a young blonde woman runs into the hangar. This is a, a, a classic small town American beauty. Um, she has long, luscious blonde hair and a freckly face. But the best thing about her is her smile. It's your season one love interest, Julie Lovely. Rick, Rick, oh Rick, please, please don't go. It's, it's so, it's so dangerous. Red Scare has caused so much damage and panic and fear all across the country. I know you're, I know you're the best fighter pilot, maybe in the world, but please, please for me, just stay this once julie lovely season one love interest because i love you so much that's why i have to go out there and finally defeat red scare and get rid of this scourge from 1990s america Rick, tim is tim is an excellent pilot he's flown so many solo missions to resounding success i mean look at him he's fantastic you sure rick i'm not sure if i can keep doing this the, the fast life you want to live, I think maybe it's a little too fast for me. But I've got to go fast. I've got to go fast to protect you, Julie. Rick. Rick. But I've got to go. You, you, you're going to slow me down. Rick, I really, really wish I didn't have to say this. I've been tossing and turning all night. I need you to stay here with me. It's either me or it's that jet. But if I choose you, everyone might be in danger. 
but at least if I choose danger zone for the jets, I can stop some of that danger happening. I'm sorry, Julie, but you're gonna have to eat alone tonight. Fine, fine. <laughs> I meant what I said. <sighs> Richard Thunder, I never wanna see you again. And she turns and she runs. No time for that lovey dovey stuff. Come on, Rick. Get in the cockpit. Let's go take care of that brilliant bastard Red Scare once and for all. Oh, I'm doing this for you, Julie. You might not know it now, but I'm doing it for you and our future family together. Sure. Let's go. Tim leaps into the cockpit of his F 16 Tomcat and guns up the engine. <laughs> as, as you do the same, as the engines kick in and these two magnificent ghost gray fighter jets rocket out of the hangar and up into the sky to an uncertain future. Welcome everyone to CBW and welcome to this climactic night of worlds collide. Prepare yourselves as these interdimensional duelists clash inside and outside the ropes in the name of revenge, reclamation, and retribution. Oh, yeah. <laughs> CB dub. Dub. CB dub. CB dub. Up the CB dub. We shoot forward now. Mere, mere minutes, but in fact, years and years and years to the year 3000, a futuristic city unpopulated by people. Every man, woman, and child is inside behind a screen working to keep the machines of industry running and interacting with the world through digital devices alone. But in the skies above the city, a purple glow shimmers and sparks and erupting from this rift in space time, an F-16 Tomcat that moments ago was hundreds of meters above the Bermuda Triangle, now rockets into this futuristic cityscape and skids to a crazy halt atop a large open-topped skyscraper. Where's this? We were just <laughs> over the Bermuda Triangle just now. It was just sea everywhere. But now it's just cityscape and mechs. Beep boop, beep beep boop, beep boop. Yeah, I think we have somehow been hurtled through time to the year 3000 via some interdimensional portal above the Bermuda Triangle. Wait a second. How are you talking, Danger Zone? You were just in an animate jet minutes ago. You somehow gained consciousness through the time portal? You're at the cockpit of this F-16 flips open and your ejector seat launches you out just a few meters into the air before you land gently, if a little shakily on the roof of this building. Um, beep, boop, boop, beep. A few more sounds come from the jet and then you see the form of this jet start to shift slightly as its thrusters morph into the shape of legs and two arms stretch out from behind its wings. And its cockpit folds down over its chest to reveal a sort of robot-esque face sitting above where shoulders would lie. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep. You're a mech now. I mean, I was really scared a second ago and I still am because I am a thousand years from where I need to be. But knowing that you're here with me, maybe I can get through this and maybe I can find, find a way back home. Then his own reaches out a robotic fist um, <laughs> oh. to the fist bump. Grand. And just like that, your mind is back in the present day as you sit on the ground in front of the empty carcass of danger zone in the erupted storage space of cruel britannia wrestling moments after the question collector disappeared having drained every last jot of time energy and therefore every last jot of time force from the body of danger zone the rain pours heavily on danger zone's metallic shell and you are truly a man alone in time i'm glad i just found this bottle of whiskey here if it was so close to when that happened. I've been drowning my sorrows already. D Danger Zone's gone. And 
I was tricked by the question collector. I need to find a way to, to get him back. <gasps> the black box. That's where he's, his mind would have been stored. Maybe if I can find the, the, the man who did this again with the black box, he can restore my best friend Danger Zone. And with that thought light bulb pinging above your handsome head, we now travel to somewhere else in the city of London, to a room in a fancy townhouse in Chiswick. We find ourselves in a basement room in, the, in a fancy townhouse in Chiswick, where wealthy wax magnet uh, Desmond de Composé is leaning over a large bubbling cauldron of wax. On the shelves and workspaces by him are precise artisan's tools, scalpels, um, there's some calipers, some very fine, minute uh, sculpting tools. And there are like, calipers and uh, conical flasks, speakers, bunts and burners burning. Desmond is hard at work over this big, thick, bubbling cauldron. And there is a knock on the door. Uh, Lo, can you please tell us who steps inside? A very right to do uh, youngish um, woman. I can't remember if she's youngish or not. We'll lean into it. Um, and yeah, she's with brown hair and <laughs> very, very posh and lovely. And she knocks on the door and she says, hello, dear. <sighs> not even turning around to look at you. You hear his cold voice simply say the words I'm working darling but I thought you might like to know I redecorated the entire house because I was bored I'm working <sighs> darling oh come on why don't you come up and have a look we'll have a little bit of time together he turns around now quick as a flash like eyes flashing with rage at this point. I said I am working, darling. What did we agree about my laboratory? What did we say? The one rule about my lab. Don't redecorate it even if I really... really Never come in my lab, damn it! <laughs> now leave me, <laughs> darling, to my work. And he turns back to his cauldron and starts to lean in with some tools, scooping out bits of molten wax onto little tile surfaces. I go to turn um, and leave, but I hear a little voice, a little scriggly, scraggly voice in the back of my head that says, it would be so easy. <laughs> 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 and it would, it would be so easy. As that voice enters your head, you see uh, Desmond lean just a little bit further in, just to get at the really good wax. <laughs> I go to think that I want to push him in. I just want to push him in. That's all I want to do. It's kind of simple and easy. But the voice tells me to grab the pipes that he uses to manoeuvre the wax jam it into his system and fill him with wax so he can be as stiff and as boring forever. Well, <laughs> that is 100% a real role. <laughs> oh, I hate real on this character. <laughs> oh, all my other characters are like plus a million. Um, five. Five. So you have the option of using your addict roll, but bear in mind the way this works is once you make your first reroll on addict, um, after that roll is over, your real stat is permanently reduced by one, and all subsequent rolls must still be made on real. You do have an infinite number of subsequent rerolls for different occasions, but each one will reduce your real stat more and more, so you can let it stand, or you can sacrifice something to roll again. <laughs> Can't do it this early on in the episode. Do it. Do it. Listen to the other voices. Do it. Can I? Be so easy. <laughs> can I just sacrifice something small and get like half a point knocked off? That is not how it works. Like a fingernail or a tooth. If the sacrifice isn't big enough, then the power won't come. Okay, fine. I'm going to let this one ride. Do it. 
Um, okay, as you lunge towards him with these pipes, um, he hears the sound of your footsteps, your expensive heeled shoes on the floor of the workshop and spins before you even reach him. Um, just in enough time to sort of grab the pipes himself. And the two of you are now locked in a death grip on these um, wax maneuvering bits of metal. Um, hmm. As he, it's well known bit. If you won't get out of my lab, then get out of my life, and starts to maneuver you towards the wax cauldron. What are you doing? Um, oh, I'm going to go for a real classic move. I'm going to let him overpower me just enough so that I can pull out of the way and he can fall in. That's a work roll. That kind of tricky maneuvering is work. Do you know what? On this character, work isn't shit, so that's fine. <laughs> Ten! Ten. <laughs> um, that'll do it. Please tell us how you finally do away with your husband. <laughs> well, he is coming towards me and his eyes are filled with anger, but he's also still boring at the same time. I don't <laughs> understand. It is ridiculous. And I just kind of see his wrists and I hear that voice being like, it would be so easy. And you're like, <laughs> it would. And in a giggle, I just let it fall but at the last moment turns slightly to my left and he just goes head first into the cauldron before he even has a second to scream his cries of pain are muffled by molten wax oh. and the oh. most boring <laughs> inconsiderate man um, in the world so dog is submerged in the material that he has devoted his life to by the woman he has failed to devote his life to mm. and he is gone beneath the bubbles solidified Classic. forever and wax. It's a really big cauldron. I don't even know how we got it in the basement. <laughs> as soon as the bubbles calm down, there is a knock on the door. Um, a knock which causes the ajar door to swing fully open, and you see the tall, lurch-like figure of your man, servant, Paranorman. Oh, I see you've murdered the master. <laughs> <laughs> Always so observational. I love you. I love you, Paranorman. You're, you're so wonderful. How are you, dear? I live to serve my favorite things to hear and in keeping with my professional service there is a man at the door here seeking your professional services someone who needs a medium so he can contact the spirit of his best friend Ooh. wonderful get the tea we'll have a lovely time i'm so excited i will send him straight to the seance room thank you okay um he makes his way back downstairs and greets you once again, Rick Thunder, in the lobby of Demonique's house and starts to lead you down a series of opulently decorated hallways and past some opulently decorated rooms to Demonique's seance room. Uh, Demonique, can we have a very quick description of what your seance room looks like? Red. Just red. <laughs> it's red and plush. It's, I want sheepskin on the floor. I want it to be a bad porn film kind of red. <laughs> Um, everything's red. I don't understand why. I was just in a very red mood. I think it was just before I killed my husband. Um, so everything just in a very blood play. Do you know what? Yeah, and lots of vases and fresh flowers. It smells delicious. Okay. Um, and as <laughs> as um... don't don't like red. I don't, I don't like I don't like red. Oh. How much fun? Uh, really, sir, you sometimes you have to learn to read the room and it closes the door behind you and leaves. <laughs> um, and you are you are you are um you are alone with Demonique in the sense room. Demonique is sitting at one side of the table. There is an empty seat waiting for you on the other side. Oh, thank you so much for meeting with me. Uh, I hear I hear you're really good at talking to uh, people of past. My my best friend, who who was a jet, who, who became sentient, it was, it was a lot of time travel stuff. He, uh, I'm just a bit overwhelmed right now. He literally just died in front of me after a big massive fight thing. And <laughs> I've got his mother box here. It's like a black box. I think it's got his personality. And I need to talk to him. I need to connect to him somehow to find out where he is. Okay. Can you help me? Okay, okay. Try the tea. Okay. <laughs> Get it out. This is horrible tea. It's only red leaf tea. Oh, damn it. Red. <laughs> you, you some Try kind the of tummy? Try the cake. It's red velvet. <laughs> oh, good red, white, and blue tea. Just red alone. 
Okay, and with that, um, with that uh, TIFO oh. part passed, the two of you settle down to the business of a seance. Hmm. Are you red, ready? As ready as, uh, as yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, good. Take a nice deep breath in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. Now your friend. You say they aren't human? Are they a machine? Ah, oh, hell. Hell, Dominique. I don't know. He's the most human person I've ever met. But yeah, the, the, he is a mechanical jet. <laughs> 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 right, it's demonic, but that's fine. Sorry. Um, so I've never contacted the spirit of the machine before, but um, we'll give it a go. So I want you to imagine your friend in your mind. Take a nice, wonderful, warm feeling and now I want you to picture him dying before your very eyes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, Lo, can you make a look roll for me, please, to see how oh, successful you are? Look, so that is eight. Um, beautiful. All of a sudden, um, the glaring red colour of this room just fades from sight, and it's just the two of you in a table in an infinite void of blackness. And the little black box sitting in the center of the table as the focal point starts to glimmer ever so faintly with a slight purple hue. And then suddenly, whoosh, both of your minds are transported um, through time and space into another kind of void, um, something which seems to be everywhere and nowhere at once. And in the center of that void is a figure, tall, well-muscled, well-bred, in a green suit, leaning on a question mark staff, a pair of shimmering spectacles atop his nose, and his whole body is pulsating with that orange, with that purple plasmid energy, which you have seen shimmering around Danger Zone time and time again. For the briefest moment, those eyes seem to be looking straight at you, and then <laughs> the vision ends, and you are back in the red room again, as red as it ever was. That's that, that. That must be the guy who's got danger zone. Who is it? Don't know. Good work. <laughs> Strong work, Rick. God. Well, how do we get to him? Well, I. I mean, I've. Have Have I got a? Have, have I still got the 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 time travel device that I got from the the high school place? You do. It is probably right now at the wreckage of the hot air balloon, but it's an easy enough place to get to. Can, can we go back there, Dominique? Could, could you join me and help me if I need to contact that person again to find out where Danger Zone is? On one condition. You get my name right. Demonique. Demonique. De oh my God. Demonique. <laughs> Denise. It's your best friend. <laughs> I'll settle for Dee Dee. We're saying the same thing, I can't. <laughs> okay, right, Rick, I'm just, let's go. I'm, I'm, Paranorman, pack me a lunch. And let's oh, find my best friend. Oh God, I'm a weird, why am I doing this? I feel like already there's a little voice going, it would be so easy. <laughs> 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 so the two of you arrive at the broken wicker and punctured balloon of the dirigible that you were flying only a day ago up into the skies of London. So, Dee Dee, I've got the black box which has Danger Zone's sentience in. Hopefully we Wonderful. can revive that. I've got the time travel uh, device that hopefully we can use to jump between a few dimensions to get him back. But those places I've been, those people I've seen, they're powerful and I'm a mere human. So I need to construct my own suit from the wreckage of my best friend. Might just have a record watching a man get chased. Oh good God. Ah yes. It's lovely, dear. When you've got to make a Halloween costume at the last minute. Oh, that's good audio. That's gonna be wonderful audio. Crinkle thunder. 
Uh, and with Rick Thunder now wearing <laughs> the uh, repurposed corpse of his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, you hit the button on the interdimensional device and <laughs> shimmer into space and time itself. It is high noon. Yeehaw! <laughs> In deep. a little sheep town, just oh, some two, three miles out from the town of Grappler's Gulch. The sun burns high in the sky. The tumbleweed blows across the street. The stores are quiet. The sheep are sleeping. No one here has a worry in the world. No one here notices the gang and no good hoodlums who are gathering outside the United Bullion Bank. Luke, please can you describe the bunch of no good some bitches who are waiting here? What you see is the most feared man in all of Colorado. Mad Dog McCree and his gang as shit kickers. <laughs> We're here to rob a bank. Um, can you please tell us uh, your gang and who they are? Of course I can. Everyone knows the fearsome shit kickers around these airports. No teeth, Terry. No ears, Earl. No nose, Noel. No arms, Andy. And just fine, Justin. Although, who knows how long he'll be. Just fine. If you catch my drift, I like to kill people. <laughs> I can't even remember my husband. Good work. I have it written down here on my second monitor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it is mere minutes away from uh, from five past high noon, the agreed upon time where you and your gang are going to rob this bank. Uh, what are the last words you say to what is this sort of rousing gangly dis, uh, speech or words you're going to say to your gang before you do the job you came here to do? You see no teeth Terry over there? Don't fuck it up or you'll be just like him. Suddenly there is a burst of um, purple and blue energy and whoom. What tarnation? Uh, the, the, sands, the sand is it's launched up into the air, um, blinding you temporarily. As it settles, you find yourself looking at three members of your gang, sort of scrabbling for their revolvers, like looking around, like spitting at everything they can find. Um, however, two seem to have been flattened by the arrival of two unexpected visitors. A handsome, <laughs> a handsome man in a really quite macabre <laughs> metal suit um, and a well-to-do lady, ex evidently of excellent breeding. Uh, first, uh, Mad Dog, which two members of your gang have been KO'd by the sudden arrival and who's left? Uh, I would, no arms Andy uh, got taken out and uh, no nose Noel, unfortunately got taken oh, out of the group. <laughs> I know, I liked <laughs> Noel. <laughs> he was a good one as well. Uh, Rick and uh, Demonique, you have arrived suddenly in a cloud of sand in the old west. Danger zone! Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, hello! Worth a go. I've, I've landed and... on someone. Well, maybe if you tried it a bit more gracefully, it wouldn't be in such a shit heat. Hello, my name's Jim and Nick. What's yours, dear? Oh, I think that's much of your business around here. Everyone knows who I am. Well, which is I kind don't. of a double negative. Yes, so if you wouldn't mind, what's your name, dear? Name's Mad Dog. Oh, lovely. Mad, like a pooch. Mad Dog McCree. No, not like a pooch. But who, who the fuck might you be? <laughs> <laughs> and what's this here? It's all this dust and all this purple <laughs> nonsense and this strange man and his seemingly metal corpse around his body there. Well, I'm Demonique. Um, I'm, I'm a very, very well-to-do, awesome, established socialite um, and a medium, I know, quite impressive. And this man dressed in a trash bin is, is Rick. Thunder. I'm Rick Thunder. This is Daria. We're here <laughs> to save my friend. We know each other. You look a lot like that earwig lady. I once knew her. Oh, earwigs. Lovely. No, 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 sadly. It's all my actual natural hair. Oh, one of your gangs. 
when a big gang pipes up and says, uh, boss, it's, it's full past high noon. Are we, what, what are we going to do? We, we, this is our, our one and only chance to get this gold. And we're down two men. You're absolutely right, Justin. I've been distracted here by this very, very handsome man and this odd looking lady over here. But we got banks to rob, so if you don't mind, quietly fuck off. We're busy. I was going to say, you're two people down. Hey, 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 D Daria, Daria, what sidebar for a moment. I think I've seen this guy before. He's a bit, he's, he's aggressive, but he gets the job done. Um, I think he might be a good person to have on our side. Wonderful. But we'll keep an eye on him. So maybe we can convince him to join our gang, get back danger zone. Wonderful. Well, how are we going to convince him, dear? idea that just popped into my head nothing that you said nothing that i've said at we all. could volunteer to be the people in his gang no oh, shit the bed that sounds like a wonderful idea <laughs> so what say a pretty boy you want to go get some gold want to be a man you want to join the shit kickers yes let's help him <clears throat> okay it's your gang it's your robbery take the lead mad dog well, it's very very simple we watch this bank, we watch the money go in. When the money goes in, we then get our guns out and we go in and we start shooting up the place and then we take the gold and then we come out again and then the gold will be out, we'll have the gold. <laughs> and then we'll get on our horses and we'll, then we'll, we'll go. It's a very simple plan. Sounds a bit messy. <laughs> Might I suggest an alternative? Me messy? I know. Are you trying to take over here, little Missy? Okay, don't worry, McPuppy Face. We're absolutely fine. What I need you to bear in mind is that maybe I have an alternative. So, you know, I have a gift and I think I can use it. What well, now? What kind of gift might you have that is better than just going in and shooting people? <laughs> well, I can go in and possibly convince someone just to give us the money. Wouldn't that be fun? Do people die when you do that? No, but you can shoot whoever you like after. How about that? Deal, I like it. She's fun. wonderful. So now I will do this on one condition. Feels like Name I'm doing all the price. legwork on this, Rick, but that's fine. <laughs> Name your price. You sound like a sharp man. If we do this, we need your sharp brains and strong good looks on a team to take on the biggest, scariest villain of all. How do you feel? Do I get to kill him? Ricky Ruse? Oh, Ricky Ruse. Sorry, can yes. you, you use, use my name. I get no. confused if you don't use my actual name. Uh, mm. You sure can kill him um, after I'm done with him. Shooting a corpse. I ain't done that since last week. It was quite the tickle, actually. Oh, fuck it, I'm in. Sounds fun. And with that, Will it be you see the um, carriage arrive now down the high street, um, the, the stagecoach carrying the bullion trundles down the high street, trundles across the sand, settles outside the United Bullion Bank, and immediately a bunch of bank hands make their way out of the building to start loading this gold in. Um, they load it in piece by piece by piece until all the gold is inside. Um, feel free to interrupt at any point you need to, and once they're done, they simply make their way back to the stagecoach, saddle up, and ride back out of town. Now, Miss Demonique, I believe this is where you step in. But if things go sideways, you just give me a little holler. And I'll come in here and shoot someone. That's what I do. Thank you, Mook Wiener. Um, so, I, very, I very wander in, happy as Larry, say hello to everyone. And considering it's actually not that two different times difference, I actually look kind of like I fit in. I'm the right clothing. It's kind of Victorian and shake era. So I'm like, I fit right in. I just sound kind of a, a different with an accent like this, which Americans love an English accent. So that's fine. Um, so I wander in and I just go straight up to the counter and I have uh, just feel my beautiful inner voice just crawl into me and I do my best to throw her into a person behind the counter to possess them and they will go get the money for me. Okay, so outside um, 
Rick, uh, Mad Dog, your gang are all just watching in disbelief as this woman uh, saunters inside. Uh, Lo, that's a look roll from you. This was my idea, by the way, McCree. Uh, eight. Oh, no, nine plus one. Grand, yeah, you immediately shoot inside the body of Nebins Smith. Small man, loves his job, <laughs> um, has no life outside of it, just loves admin and paperwork, and you are now inside his body. So I'm inside his body, so it's not me, it's my other half, bless her, she's an absolute babe. And he just grumbles over to the gold, He's, she just, he, she gets inside his body, he's like, pick up the gold. Mm. So he goes over, picks over the gold, and picks up as much as his hands can carry, and then she says, place it on the counter. And then she, he places it on the counter, and Demonique just politely says, thank you so much, it's been so wonderful doing business with you. And then I just scoop it all up. Then I saunter out like no one's business. Okay, so there's quite a lot of gold that you're able to scoop up a certain amount of a very heavy metal um, in your dress, but there's, yeah, there's a fair amount of gold, so it's going to take a few more people to get the rest of it out. Um, but Mad Dog, Rick, you see, and the rest of the gang see Demonique leave the bank with some gold bullion um, in her dress like an apple pie. Boys, help her out! Help her out! Let's get her out of here! Oh, wonderful. Thank you, boys. So kind. So many gentlemen around these parts. See, Rick? So many lovely people. Hey! Hey, you there! Stop! Stop! Stop what you're doing right now! It's the familiar gravelly voice of the local town sheriff who was out for his afternoon cigarette, leaning on the wooden post in the front of his office, and suddenly sees a woman he's never met before carrying lumps of gold bullion out in their dress, and then a gang of the ugliest-looking reprobates and a man in a weird metal suit um, rush inside the bank after her. Deputies! Deputies! We got ourselves a robbery! And two young men in very clean waistcoats, uh, speed out from this sheriff's office and they all rush towards the bank where you and the gang are. What are you doing? Boys, law enforcement's here. Start shooting. Uh, give me a look roll for your men. Look is zero. And it is a seven. That, that's enough to peg one of the deputies right in the neck, straight through the Adam's <laughs> apple and out the back end. He wheezes and then, boof, lands on his back. Uh, Rick, what are you doing? I've realized I can't move in, <laughs> in the robot suit. Uh, I haven't actually moved since we got here. Since I put it on, we time jumped. And, and it's all so heavy <laughs> because it was just big planks of metal. Thought it would just would work, but it hasn't. Okay. So I just stand there and I yell, get behind me, use me for cover. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I would say that can be a, a look roll because you're wearing your best friend to see if you can be sufficient cover. Um, <laughs> Zero. Seven. Seven, just about, yeah. Um, it's quite a clunky suit and the three conscious members of Mad Dogs get, get behind you and they just start basically peering out from behind a shoulder or under a thigh, firing off a couple of shots and they're going to time to keep the sheriff's men at bay. Where are we going to put this? We've only got as far as getting it out. Where do we go, dear? We'll get to my horses. We just need to get out of town quick. We need to deal with these lot first. I'm pulling out my gun. And I'm going to start shooting at the sheriff. Uh, give me a, give me a real roll for that. Yeah. What? What am I roll? My real is minus one. Uh, it's still a seven. <laughs> um, yeah, you take out another deputy, and it's just the sheriff now who's sort of ducking behind um, the the rocking chair outside his office. Uh, the wood is not as good cover as a giant metal suit. Um, you, you've got him pinned down, basically, between um, with the loss of his two deputies and with the rest of the gang safely ensconced behind Metallic Rick Thunder. You have him pinned down. Um, get out of here, boys. We need to get moving. <laughs> um, are you going to grab any more gold? Are you just going to peg it? No. We've got the gold um, we need. I think we're all we need, um, but it's too heavy for me to carry. Can I just um, get a piggyback on the guy behind the counter, Nez? Nes uh, Nes Nesbit, uh, I think. Nesbit Smith. Nebins. Ne yeah. Nebins, that's it. <laughs> I can't run, so I need to ride someone. So is that okay? That's absolutely fine. Give me a oh. um give me I guess it's a <laughs> I guess it's a look roll. Nebins yeah. roll. Oh. Nebins roll. <laughs> Love a Nebins roll. What's he Nebins? <laughs> I can't believe this is when I get <laughs> Nevins oh, roll! Nevins, come um, through, Nevins! Oh. Um, so, Hi ho, Nevins! <laughs> um, as, as soon as you jump on Nevins' back, he just squats down, tenses his muscles, and his bank <laughs> uniform bursts off his chest to reveal an incredibly toned athletic body. He gets down on all fours on his hands and knees, um, waits for you to sort of get up on his back, um, and then just <laughs> um, makes almost like a <laughs> <laughs> really noise. 
Um, and then just Strebens. and then just gallops outside. So, um, yeah. Oh, be um, darned! Both of them up like a pack horse. <laughs> That's the craziest shit I've ever seen. And I've literally seen a man who thinks he's a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the gang are still keeping the sheriff at bay behind Rick, standing there steadfast as a metallic shield. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Mad Dog, you're carrying as much gold as you can, and the rest is basically loaded up on the back of Nebbins, who is running <laughs> like, a, like a prize thoroughbred straight out of the bank um, and straight towards where the horses are all tied up. Um, Next, carry me. Because I can't move. Make, make an, <laughs> no. I'm going to have to drag <laughs> okay. you if you're not. If, I, if you're going to move, I'm going to have to drag you with me. Okay, give me a power roll to see if you can drag Rick. Oh man, minus one. Fucking hell. Um, minus one is man, I don't know, seven again. Six, one, seven. six and two. Just about. It takes you and also the combined efforts of the rest of your gang, still using him as a human shield as they drag him, <laughs> to drag the metallic heavy body of Rick Thunder through like the sand. I feel here, guys. I feel like a nice contributor. He's got a good hat, though. <laughs> <laughs> until you make sat it, on your hat. <laughs> until you make it back to the horses. I the guy. <laughs> Did the squash guy's hat. <laughs> I knew I recognized that hat. <laughs> oh no! Um, yeah, you you no. make it back to where the horses are tied up, and the remainder of your unconscious gang is still resting, um, <laughs> safely away from the sheriff. At this point, the rest of the gang start unloading the gold. Yeehaw! <laughs> and um, couldn't have gone any better, boys. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pete. <laughs> Honestly, it went down exactly as I thought it would. Uh, ne Nebins <laughs> drops down to his knees to allow you to get off his back. Thank you, Nebins. <laughs> <laughs> Do we not get to keep him? <laughs> Tell you what, man. Um, give me a give me a look roll. I'm going to need a hard success, and we'll see what happens. <gasps> He's a wild Nebins now. <laughs> uh, it's an eight. It's an eight. <laughs> um, Nebins. I could re-roll. Is Nebins worth a finger? No. <laughs> You're cool. Excuse me. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could quit you, Nebins. <laughs> okay. Nebins, um, Nebins having uh, help, helped unload the gold from his own back, um, walks up to you um, on all fours still <laughs> and bows his head, um, scrapes his feet across the ground. <laughs> um, and then just gives you a sort of a, that kind of look of respect and affection that only a horse can give. Um, as the uh, Chip's time travel <laughs> cube starts to glow blue again as Rick gets back close to it. Cool. Oh, it's it's gonna it's gonna go. Uh, so is Nebins coming? Was that a respect of a look of respect and I'll follow you wherever through time? Um, <laughs> that is a look of respect from Nebins, but I'm afraid that needed to be a hard success. <laughs> Damn, so we'll see what happens. Look of ultimately, I'm a bank manager. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rick Thunder, seeing someone making friends with a horse. Painful. Quick, everyone, help drag me over to this box. <laughs> <laughs> what box is this? Go on without me and carry this... me with you. <laughs> Hell's up with this box, man. Um, so the gang is able to get you close enough to it, and then that blue light coming from the box gets brighter and brighter, and then whoosh, all of a sudden, all you see is blinding blue light, and then phew, the light is gone. And Rick. Mad Dog, Demonique, you find yourselves in another unfamiliar place. You see a large and liquor-stained armchair in a large and liquor-stained drawing room, littered with piles of electronics and machinery. On the wall above the dilapidated fireplace is a faded painting of a very serious, very imposing looking man. A corroded brass plaque beneath it is engraved with the words Life isn't fair. Seated in this armchair, you see the one, the only, the black sheep of the robotics scene. Piston Fairmont with a whiskey in his hand. Uh, he, he throws it back aghast to see uh, the time travelers who've materialized in his rather dilapidated, uh, run down uh, manner. There are robots uh, everywhere. Um, 
bro uh, empty whiskey bottles, uh, cables snaking all the way up to the wall to the ceiling, which has a mechanism on it. And Piston, um, he's you know he, he grabs his uh, screwdriver, which he carries with him. He's, he's completely stained from head to toe in grease, and he says, "Who the devil are you? Where the hell are we? Where is this place?" This is the year 3000, I've been here before. My name's Rick Thunderpiston Fairmont, and we need your help. My God, is that a, a robot man? My, you've, you found a way to symbiosis yourself with this, with this metal suit. Yeah, you're, you're what I've been searching for. Ah, I, I will get it back. I will reclaim my legacy. Uh, please, please, uh, tell me, tell me. How, how, do, how have you formed uh, symbiosis with this metal robo suit? He fell in a bin. So I, I pretty much just, it was a lot of gaffer tape and- Gaffer, ga gaffer tape. Gaffer tape and gaffer just tape. Tape. parts of my old jet. A um, jet. And now, jet. now I am somewhat <sighs> stuck in it. But what you could do, I, d I did manage to make a mech sentient, a jet <gasps> sentient. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So you it see, might I've... not be symbiosis. But if you help me turn this really quite encumbersome suit into something more effective, I can tell you how you can make robots think. Yes. And then finally, the name Fairmont. Robots. It will mean something again, Father. You will be proud. I, I will bring our name back to prominence. And we will finally eclipse that damn Alexi Tetris. Uh, fine. That's but, a good guy. Uh, you see, I, I see three of you. Right, now, I'll help you if you help me. Looking at my stopwatch, uh, it's time. My experiments. If you help me with this experiment, I'll help you do whatever it is you need me to do. Understand? Yeah. Right. No! What is the experiment? You there. Ah, enchanté, mademoiselle. I take a hand and plant a greasy kiss upon it. Um, I need you to stand over here, and when I say go, I need you to flick this power switch. You, um, the man with the, uh, with the hat, you seem uh, brawny, as they say. You seem to have some, uh, some meat going on underneath those sleeves, eh? Uh, I need you um, to pull this uh, winch. Here, can you do that for me? Uh, I'm so who are you? What was this place? The hell's a robot? What's a... My what, name what is... is Piston Fairmont, formerly of Fairmont Robotics. I used to be the wealthiest man in the world. I am the son of the father of robotics. D damn, I didn't ask for your life story, man. I just want to know where the you hell did. I am. No, you did, though. You did. So Thunder, I... Thunder, what is this place? Where the hell are you taking me? What happened to my gold? There's even more gold here, uh, McCree. Yeah. Uh, so you got gold? Do what, uh, do what um, the guy says. Oh, you got gold. I got the go gold. The winch. And, I got the, the winch. I got it then. Get me that gold. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And it looks like you conduct electricity, my old metallic friend. So I'm going to ask you to hold these two cables. Yes, the storm is reaching its apex. It's almost time. Now you see, uh, things have been a little bit lean in the Fairmont uh, family for a while. So uh, we have uh, unfortunately lost uh, a little bit of the, uh, the old electric bill. So we're going to have to do this the old fashioned way. Uh, mad dog, was it? Please, the winch. It's almost time. Uh, give me a power roll on that winch, mad dog hit my arm on the radiator. <laughs> <laughs> really Sorry. hard. Soldier up, Mad Dog. Uh, oh, Smeg. Uh, that'll be um, four. Mad Dog, Jesus Christ. Um, Sorry, Mad man. Dog, my elbow. Is, <laughs> uh, th this is a winch that, like most of the stuff you designed, is, is normally the kind of manual labor that would be performed by robots in the year 3000. So it's a little bit much for Mad Dog to do on his own. Uh, uh, are my boys with me? Um, unfortunately, no. Just the three oh, of you made man. it through. No boys. No, <laughs> no, no bank clerk come horse, I'm afraid, either. I say, well, I mean, I really should be on hand to do the last minute tinkerings with the, with the machines as they, as they come to light. But no, tell you what. Help me, help uh, me get I, it started. I'll help you. I'll help you. And I grab and I also try and pull the winch. Okay, both of you make a power roll as long as one of you succeeds, I'm happy. All right, my power is minus one, of course. Uh, but that is seven. Nine. 
Um, perfect. Yeah, it, it seems um, having to compete against another man has has riled up um, uh, Mad Dog's hackles, and a new sort of burst of adrenaline courses through your arms as the two of you successfully pull that winch. Uh, so the the roof above me opens and thunder and lightning fill the sky. Uh, you can see that as the roof parts, all of these cables that have been sneaking, uh, snaking up the walls uh, all coalesce around this um, pylon that reaches uh, high, high above the manor into the heavens. I look at my watch, yes. Yes, it's almost time. Uh, you have that, you have it. Now, when the lightning strikes, uh, Demonique, was it? Yes, dear. Demonique, I'm going to need you to flick the switch and then, finally, I'll have them again. My robo boys, my wrestlers, I will have them back. And you, um, as, as a sort of lightning um, goes off uh, above us, you can sort of see in the darkness um, lots and lots of mechanical uh, wrestlers dotted around the room. You have a uh, macho mandroid Ram D. Savage. Uh, you have Y3J, uh, John Botsley, uh, Kane Frame, Cyborg Lesnar, Bionic Jackson, Stone Cold Steve Automaton, and Brian Cage. Ah, lightning uh, <laughs> is striking. Um, lightning strikes the pylon, I guess. Do I need um, to hand over to you, Tom? Uh, so what, what is exactly that you need Demonic to do? Uh, when the lightning reaches her, travels through um, Rick Thunder's metal frame and reaches um, this kind of big control unit, that's when I'm going to need um, Demonique to hit the uh, switch at just the right time to breathe life into my boys. We're doing this the old fashioned way. So um, Mad Dog's done his part. Rick, I'm going to need a power roll from you to withstand this electricity, and I'm going to need a work roll from Demonique um, to get that timing absolutely right. Um, <laughs> my power's minus two. Hey. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> um, and Demonique, what did you uh, get? Well, I've got a six. <laughs> six, okay. I'll so the help the, these days. Um, so, yeah, the, these the lightning clouds... Was fine which have gathered um, above this laboratory, dark and rub against each other. And there is an almighty crack a thoom as a bolt of lightning shoots straight down into the laboratory and passes through the metal, through the metallic armor of uh, Rick Thunder. Um, however, this amount of force is more than a man who's had a busy day is able to quite put up with and you lose your footing you lose your balance slightly, and rogue sparks of lightning start to jet off across the room. Um, Demonique, with the lightning not behaving as it should do, um, no matter how precise you are, the, there's no way to time exactly when that switch should be switched. And as you switch it, there is a huge eruption of electric energy from the center of the room around Rick as bolts of lightning shoot out across the lab um, into robot after robot after robot after robot after robot. <laughs> No, it's too powerful. I need the converter. Oh, no. A huge whir oh, of metal and cogs no. and buzzing electricity as an army of wrestling robots rise into life and all immediately turn their eyes on you, Piston, and start advancing towards you. Oh, what are you all doing? Thunder, you got that... Time thing, can you get us out of here? I'm, I'm currently on the floor, immobile. <laughs> but uh, get it's, your it's yellow belly there. ass up! It's, it's, I can't move it, it's, it's over there, it's by the... DD had it. Uh, I don't mean to sound uncouth, but did any of you bring any weapons? <laughs> I got my gun. Got me. Um, no time like the present then, old boy. Um, well, you get the time who to dig it, and now I will go and shoot something. <laughs> 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 okay, um, go and go, go and shoot something, uh, Mad Dog. Give me a real roll. Yeah, I really start to do some work. Um, a real is minus one. That'll be four. Oh, Unfortunately, God. your old timey revolver is just not enough to penetrate these metal bodies, and it ricochets Shit. off these um these <laughs> robots. These robots who strangely aren't moving erratically and um randomly, but seem to be working in perfect organized unison. They step at the same time. They move their left arm at the same time. Their heads turn to focus and follow Piston as he moves around the room at the same time. They do uh, Rick... move in herds. 
Rick, um, can you give me a power roll to try and get up, oh, please? Geez. <laughs> Minus two on power. My man, I don't really regret putting this on. Ah, oh, three. <laughs> <laughs> You're still stuck. Dominique, what are you doing? I'm it's getting just increasingly frustrated. I go get the box and I just put it next to him being like, sort this out. And then I just go into myself and I take a deep breath in and I ask her to come out and I try and bring out my demon so that I can just rip the shit out of whatever is happening. Uh, give, me a, give me a look roll to summon your demon. Yay. It's a four. <laughs> um, oh. We'll, what a we'll, say that, we'll say that your demon does make it out of make it out of your body. Um, are you trying to are you trying to send the demon from your body? Or are you trying to have it um, basically transform you at this point in time? Are you, are you kind of channeling oh, I would it or like something? I like it to transform me so that I can rip heads off robots. I imagine okay. she can give me that kind of strength. Yeah, you you are you are able to channel her. Um, but again, just like just like the the weapons of the past are no good against these robots. At this point in time, the ferocious animal energy of your other half can't seem to penetrate these metallic hides and they just not even really seeming to want to hurt either you or to hurt mad dog just push the two of you aside and advance closer and closer on piston all red robotic eyes glowing at him directly piercingly uh quickly i need, I need an action from every one of you again mad dog i'm, I'm still just shooting i don't know any better make, make, make another real roll then <laughs> you know it. i don't know any better <laughs> Uh, Stop firing until your guns are empty. Uh, that'll be three. Fuck me! <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's oh another bit of ricochet as the robot just ignores you. Ah. Um, Rick, Demonique has placed the device next to you at this point in time. I've given you the thing. I'm going to headbutt it. <laughs> what? Headbutt it to, well, well, it's because my, I haven't got oh, any arms. I've just tell me what you need doing. Tell oh, me what you need I doing. press the button. There's a button on it. I'm going to headbutt it. Give me a work roll on that. Come on, oh, work roll. Oh, my God. God. Plus one. Oh, 11! Oh, oh, oh nice. <laughs> And at the same time, what are you doing, Oosh. Dominique? Um, at the same time, I am just, <laughs> bloody hell, um, just getting increasingly <laughs> frustrated uh, and, God, I've got nothing. <laughs> I'm, just, oh, I'm trying to push him up. I'm trying to get him back in up. There Give me a go. power roll then. Uh, that was not bad, actually. Seven. Seven. Um... Oh, six. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you try and try and try and push, but unfortunately, the heavy metallic suit that Rick Thunder willingly put on his body <laughs> has made him still completely and utterly useless. Um, but his head is free, uh, oh. and you are, with, with that number, able to bash your head um, against <sighs> this device just as a heavy metallic buzzsaw hand advances on Piston. Um, piston. What are you doing in this last moment? I am going to have one last look uh, at my father's portrait and remember the, the final words that he said to me on his, on his deathbed after I'd blown the family fortune and condemned the Fairmonts to uh, a life of ignominy and scandal. Uh, he, he said to me uh, that life wasn't fair. As Rick Thunder's head connects with the device, once again, there is a blinding flash of blue light garnished with, orange, with, garnished with purple time energy. And you're gone from the future. And then suddenly, as your new surroundings settle, all is quiet. The sounds of robotic chaos are gone, replaced by the low hum of older, cruder machinery. You are in a laboratory, one that, depending on the dimension you are from, will seem either too primitive, too futuristic, or just right. Surrounded by spectrographs and x-ray machines, you notice a sign above the door. Experimental Physics Laboratory, Grap Valley University. Ooh, stranger, I see you've made it back. And you see, standing in the doorframe, the colourful braces, colourful socks, and wiry, lean body of Chip, um, chief science nerd from Grap Valley High. You old son of a bitch! Oh, <laughs> great to see you! We, we, we've been using this time, time device you gave me with the science, and it must have taken us back here, because we're in a panic, I guess. I do, you, 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 presumably you can help us. I'm trying to find my best friend. Do you remember my car? Stranger, are you telling me your car was your best friend? Yes. Yes, I am. 
Well, stranger things have happened. He pushes his glasses up his nose. So, uh, I imagine you're a man, well, with <laughs> very little time. So what can I do for you? Well, me and my new friends, uh, this is uh, Mad Dog McCree, Piston Fairmont, and Daria. Uh, Daria... Daria Dennis is her name, I think. That's right. We, 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 we need to get to find the person who, st who took the life force of my best friend, Danger Zone. Well, I'm sure there's uh, something uh, I can do. Uh, he looks over at you, uh, Piston, and sees like a little screwdriver sticking out of your waistcoat pocket. Oh, you look like a man of science. Um, mm, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a damn good shot. Give me the box and I'll, uh, well, it is my baby. It is my creation. If anyone can figure out how to use this thing more precisely, it's old chip. Yes, and if you uh, wouldn't mind, uh, I'm a little bit more at home with all these gizmos and doodads, a bit primitive. Perhaps I could impart some of my uh, knowledge and we can get this done a little bit faster. Sounds good to me, friend. Uh, Rick, this may take a little while. Um, do you want to pass the time? I know you're a, I know you're a lover of the arts. There's a, a play going on just across the <laughs> hall in the theatre. <laughs> Mad Dog and Dee Dee, can you wheel me over to the theatre, please? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> can I possess him for a second, please? Um, make, a, make a look roll against Rick Thunder's reel. I've done mine. Done mine. What was, what was yours? Uh, actually, let, let's, let's hear um, your look first, and then we'll hear Rick's. Oh, okay, so that is plus one. Eleven. Ah, oh, seven. Um, shoop. You're instantly inside um, the body of Rick Thunder. Um, it's, it's not doing a lot of moving right now, but one thing you do immediately sense as you get inside there is a deep, deep sadness. And the sense of a man who's doing everything he can to keep it hidden from those around him. I know you're upset. I know you've got a lot on your plate. But I've done a lot of work here today. If you don't get my name right, I'm going to bash your metal head against the wall. Is that clear? Demonique. 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 Perfect. Thank you, Demonique. Honestly, okay. in a real help. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't tell everyone else when you're outside of my head. Okay, um, it's absolutely fine. Do you need a biscuit? You. I've got lunch still with me, remember? Can you? Yeah, you're a, bit a hungry. biscuit okay. and a cup of tea. And Do you know what sandwich. I think I have? Yeah, I think it's cucumbers. Never mind. Yeah, that'll be okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'm going to get out now, okay? I don't want to be inside you anymore. Sorry, right. Demon Inc. No, it's okay. Good boy. It's fine. Lots of love. <laughs> I'll pop out. And you are back in the lab. <laughs> Hand him a sandwich. <laughs> that, uh, why do you give me this sandwich? I don't need your help. Ugh. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I, it looks like you're not going anywhere particularly fast in that suit. Why don't you leave the old metal shell with me and my new friend here and we'll see if we can do something about speeding it up for you. Uh, I, I, think that, I think the show's already started. You better, you better rush if you want to catch the, uh, catch the good stuff. Can you crack me out of it then? Yes, I'll crack you out of it. And very, very quickly and effortlessly, with, with, with Piston's help, <laughs> the two managed to get the suit off you. And um, that sort of crinkling sound, which... <laughs> Everyone's been hearing for a while, disappears for a while. Yeah, yeah you better rush. What's a play? Um, so uh, <laughs> you speed across, across he campus. He had plays back then, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, banks and shooting. <laughs> <laughs> you speed across the campus um, as quickly as you can. Uh, you go through the door so fast, you don't even have time to see what's on. And as soon as you get inside, Laurie, can you please describe for us the scene um, <laughs> Rick is walking into. It's a school auditorium that's been uh, decked out with uh, sort of thick drapings, uh, almost like a bazaar um, that sort of lead down to where all the seating is. On stage, under the spotlights are two figures. Behind them paint, are painted scenes of uh, desert landscapes and a cave in the shape of uh, a jaguar's mouth and okay. uh, a huge castle. And on stage, in the center, uh, atop a sort of like wooden balcony that's been wheeled on stands Amelia Dramica dressed mm. in a uh, blue sort of pantsuit. Uh, and across from her is a figure dressed 
in sort of uh, baggy robes and with a big turban on his head. And Amelia says, Who, who's there? It's me, Prince Ali. I do not want to see you. No, no, please, princess, give me a chance. And at this point, you can see that Amelia is getting a bit frustrated. She says, uh, why would I give you a chance? I mean, I'm the important one. People come from miles around to see me. The entirety of Grab Valley is here to see me. And you think you could just flutter in here on your magic carpet and make everyone pay attention? Because, because what? Because you're the, you're the lead, you're, you're a man, and you call me princess. I'm not a princess, darling. I'm a drama queen. Amelia, you're, you're, you're going off script. Just sing your pathetic little song. I can show you the world <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splendid Tell me, princess, now when did you last Take a mat carpet pay, 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 pay attention You're a bit, you're a bit pitchy I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over, sideways, and under, on a... Uh, Amelia. What? On a magic carpet ride, a whole new world, a whole, a new... New oh, uh, no, no, enough of this, enough of this. I have been dealing with this prima donna behavior for the last three months and I have had it up to here. I am done, I am done, I am done with this. And you see the um, tall broad shoulder figure, a figure you recognize as Bard from the tag team, The Method, a man that you clashed with in the ring um, back in class in brawler wrestling, storm off the stage, storm through the auditorium and leave, leaving Amelia on her own in the middle mm -hmm. of the stage, halfway through a song. <laughs> well, um, I, I break, break, break in the fourth wall, darlings. Uh, as you can see, uh, Aladdin can hack it um, under the pressure. So uh, we've kind of, well, we could either do the whole thing with just me or, does anybody else want to come and try being Aladdin? And I pick up the turban that he's dropped on the floor and I offer it out. Guys, guys, I, I literally it just came out in the cinema before I got through, thrown through the Bermuda <laughs> Triangle. It's called Aladdin. It's really good. It's got cracking songs. So I think Mad Dog should go up there. <laughs> I think Mad Dog should go up there as well. I mean, that does look like fun, right? <laughs> It does matter. You should definitely do it. Flying carpets? <laughs> oh, what a magical little world it sounds like. What are carpets? Oh, it's a whole new world, one might say. No way. A whole new world. Hot and sound of that. You should write that one down. I know. Uh, I'm just going to crack. I, I, I guess I've sort of heard them talking in the back, uh, whispering. You're not exactly um, being very subtle over there. Are you coming up or not? I, I am, ma'am. Absolutely. Not, not wait, Mad Dog, Mad Dog, on one condition. Who's the Johnny, Johnny Depp sort of character? My, my name's Mad Dog, or might your name be? My name is Amelia Dramica, the finest performer in all of Grab Valley. What, what are you here for? Why do you want to be in I, this play? I can see that I was taken aback by your fantastic performance out there. I thought <laughs> it was absolutely... You stole. You stole. Oh, it was wonderful. We save the accolades for afterwards, darling. The audience are getting really restless at the point. A couple of you have actually got up and started to leave um, due to this hiatus. Sit your floor. ass down or I will shoot you where you stand. <laughs> uh, give me a look roll. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Ah. They immediately sit down just straight on the floor, like cross-legged on the floor right where they are um, and shut up and their eyes like fixed to the stage. What? Uh, are you doing here? Your little ragtag group of performers this is doing some, what are you doing? Like a, a troupe that does, you seem to be doing a roving performance of Oklahoma Cross with My Fair Lady and the Tin Man. Perhaps. My, my name's Mad Dog. That over there is a man who was in love with a jet. 
That over there is a lady who I think might be a witch. There is a man who does machines in another room. And apparently this, this thunder fella here travels through time. Well, well <laughs> pretty much all mm. caught up. <laughs> Get yeah, on yeah, with the show. Get on. Of people Did I say? See- <laughs> It's not a lot of exposition. I want to hear from you. If I want to hear from you, man, I would shoot you so you would holler. Okay. Mad dog, mad dog. Can, can I tell you a tiny secret just before we get into this? Yeah. Acting doesn't really do it for me anymore. A but while ago, so I had to. A while ago, I had to uh, go through some stuff to get the kind of starring roles that I obviously deserved. But, you know, it involved a bit of, shall we say, violence. And you lot seem to me (laughs) to be on a quest of some sort, on some sort of mission that might involve a bit of excitement and a bit of drama. Let me make you a little pitch of why I should join your slamboree. Fabulous me, Amelia Dramica. I'm strong as 10 regular men, take it from me. Cause I've best the drama club boys, a fight's my only true joy. Anyone else I'll destroy, so please take me. And as I'm doing that, she's sort of running around the stage and the chorus are coming in to join in and she's uh, flailing her fists around. And as she moves into the uh, finale of the song, she begins high kicking and one by one, just nailing the members of the chorus who are singing on stage, <laughs> boots to the face. Slambori, fabulous me, Amelia Jamica, the true star and just not some wannabe. So if you listen to the words of my song, you know you need to take me along. I got sweet chin music kicks and figure fours are hit with a chair DDT on the floor with a high spot heel hooks and cheap shots so count out the one two three and just take along me and she does this she's <laughs> the guy who's Aladdin has crept back oh. in and she's <laughs> brain buster <laughs> oh. Amelia Dramica about 10 minutes ago I made up a new saying mm-hmm. you want to come to a whole new world with us a whole new world yeah, I just made it up, right? Fantastic point of view. I'm in. <laughs> okay, and with that, we're going to quickly cut back to the lab. Um, Piston, can you tell me how successful you and... Uh, in fact, no, give me, give me a, a, either a look or a work roll. Uh, that would be... Uh, oh, they're both plus one. All right, let's give it a go. Rag. Uh, that is a seven. Okay, yeah. T- tell, me how, tell me how much progress you made, how good your job on Rick's heavy, cumbersome, deadweight armor has been. So, uh, it's not a you know, critical success. Basically, I, have, I feel like I've lost the ability to create a sentient robot. I feel like I've lost the ability to form that connection between man and machine. However, I have been able to fashion him a rather spiffy, lightweight suit of armor. Thank you. Fully mobile. It has articulation <laughs> and everything. Um, uh, can you also um, explain to me the, the new sort of <laughs> secret high five handshake you and Chip have developed? Okay, it involves, uh, you know, we basically just like uh, juggle our inhalers, uh, swap glasses, <laughs> push them up our nose. Okay, science bros, science bros. I would say with my new friend's help here, I'm very confident that the next time you press this button, you should find yourselves exactly where the interstellar conceptual remains of your best friend robot horse, car, wolf, soul lies. <laughs> All you need to no, do is say. press... It's best friend. Now, dog. Oh, it's best friend. Yeah, um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. As soon as you press this button, you'll be, translated, you'll be transported to, honestly, somewhere I have no idea where it is. What is... All I know is this is... If anything remains of your friend, this is where it exists. So if there's anything you'd like to say to each other before you go... Now's the time. So I'm joined by a cowboy, a demon-powered lady, a tech genius, and a badass drama student now addicted to violence. (laughs) 
Sounds thoroughly irresponsible, darling. That sounds like the sort of team that can not just get me back home, but also get my best friend back. We're coming for you, evil question collector force thing man. Huh? Uh, yourself quite the team. What is it that you call elves? Amelia and friends. Oh, thank God. <laughs> You're the shit kickers. <laughs> <laughs> the Fairmonts. Uh, <laughs> Thunderestimated. <laughs> Rick Thunder and the Lightning. Yeah, the Lightning people. The, the lightning <laughs> people. The lightning <laughs> family. People. We're the lightning people. We're the lightning like, family. The it's... lightning fam. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, it's canon now, says Chip, and <laughs> presses for you. And all of a sudden, uh, you disappear once again um, in a blinding flash of blue light. And then when the light settles, you find yourself standing in the center of a wrestling ring. Well, well, what time do you call this? <laughs> Welcome to CBW. Welcome to Crisis Between Worlds. That's all for this time on CBW. We'll see you all next time. That's all for part one. Stay tuned this time next week. It all ends basically just a big fight we cannot wait for you to see it because uh, we had a lot of fun filming it tying up all of those loose ends uh yeah um if you do want to see that show early please do become one of our patrons patreon.com forward slash no rolls barred like these legends scrolling along the bottom of the screen we appreciate each and every one of you we'll see you next week where it really all this it all comes it all comes to an end jam that jam <laughs>